perhaps the reason we haven't found signs of life beyond Earth is because we really just don't know what we're looking for. For so long we have looked for life in space within the parameters of what constitutes life to us. DNA, RNA, and nucleic acids. But there is a theory, the different kind of life theory that states this is the reason why we haven't been successful in our search because life outside of Earth does not need any of the things that we do to survive. Their cells get instructions in biochemical ways completely different from our own. Going off of this, one can assume that planets previously deemed as uninhabitable and therefore removed from the search area for extraterrestrial life might actually be the exact place where alien life forms could be found. The statement that only one in a million planets have the right combination of chemicals, temperature, water, days and nights to support planetary life as we know it completely discounts planetary life as we don't. Extraterrestrials who operate on an incredibly different fundamental and chemical level than our own might be lurking right in our cosmic backyard we just haven't been searching for them properly. The far away theory is a pretty straightforward one. The reason we have yet to find aliens is because they are too far away and moving further away by the minute. Basically, the theory states that due to the expansion of the universe, galaxies are constantly moving further and further away from one another and the further they become, the faster they move. Which means it's highly likely that we miss that sweet spot of alien interaction due to the fact that our society was just too underdeveloped when aliens inhabited galaxies that were close enough to communicate with. Either that or humanity didn't miss it, but we did because it already happened some 6,000 years ago which would explain the pyramid and many ancient civilizations fascinations with the stars. Either way, we're SOL for distance. But maybe we haven't found aliens yet because we haven't been communicating properly. Here's the thing. For the better half of a century, humanity has been leaking radio signals into space at such a rate that any intelligent life form within 100 light years of Earth would surely be able to pick up the signal. But as tech improves, these radio leaks reduce and one day they might disappear altogether and the Earth might fall back into radio silence. Perhaps the same is the case for other planets and the reason we haven't been able to hear their radio signals and they haven't heard any of ours is simply because in the cosmic scope of time, the radio signals just don't last that long and our timing is off. In 1974, however, humanity did make a direct attempt at communicating with aliens by beaming an interstellar message out towards a globular cluster 25,000 light years away. The only problem is that for anyone to receive the message, they would have to be situated directly in the path of the beam. Not only that, but the message took less than three minutes to transit, meaning even if an intelligent extraterrestrial civilization was perfectly situated in the path, they would have had less than three minutes to detect the signal. While it seems unlikely, it is possible that in 1977, we got lucky enough to detect a beam coming from an advanced extraterrestrial civilization down to Earth. A momentary burst of energy known as the wow signal swept across the planet, but we have not been able to figure out its origin or been able to detect it since we heard it the first time. In 2012, however, we did send back a response, but we have yet to hear back from whoever sent the wow signal. Perhaps, though, the reason we have yet to interact with intelligent life forms is because the universe has filtered them out, and one day it will filter us out too. Basically, what I'm saying is that humanity and all other life forms have an expiry date that is pre-wired into our experience and that prohibits us from ever reaching the point of extraterrestrial communications and other planetary colonizations. Why? I'm not sure, but I'm assuming it's to protect the universe somehow. I mean, Let's think about it. Let's say right now is the perfect time for life to exist on Earth. And one day, long after we're gone, it will be the perfect time for life to exist on, say, Venus. If we had already found a way to migrate to Venus and subsequently developed it to our liking and then polluted it beyond repair, the life that was supposed to exist there after we had moved on to the next planet would have zero chance at survival. So maybe the expiration date encoded into each and every living being across the universe is to allow each and every being to have its moment in time to exist. 
Branching off of that theory, the great filter theory, we have the self destruction theory, which is similar but just a bit different because instead of the universe giving us an expiration date pre coded into our existence, self destruction theory states that life on every planet is destined to kill itself in order to protect the planet itself rather than the universe as a whole. Like I said, the theories are really similar, but one is a universal law and one is planetary preservation. Self destruction theory comes from the Medea hypothesis, which is based off Medea from Greek mythology who killed her offspring. Basically our planet is Medea and we are the offspring. The very thing that gave us life is destined to kill us as we take away its own life force. An example of this is the ice ages, which those who follow the self destruction theory would blame on an excess of plants, which absorbed an excess amount of CO2 which led to extreme global cooling, greatly damaging the integrity of life on earth. Now we've come in, we've killed off a bunch of plants, we've warmed the earth up, but we warmed it up too much. and we've killed off a bunch of other living things. And this, once again, has greatly damaged the integrity of life on Earth, meaning that at some point in time before we are able to achieve an intelligence level that allows us to communicate and commute to these aliens, something is bound to come in and kill off humanity. Do you see what I'm saying? Another theory, however, states that Earth is actually the birthplace of all life, all aliens. It's the incubation theory that, to put it quite simply, states that Earth is an incubation ground for all life in our universe and that once a civilization reaches a point of high enough intelligence, they leave to colonize other planets. If this is true, it makes sense why aliens who have gone through the same process wouldn't want to interfere with our own. This is our chance to prove to the rest of the universe that we are not the runts of the litter, but that we have the capabilities to evolve into a species that can branch out into the universe on our own. The same way people who make documentaries about nature aren't supposed to step in when a lion tries to eat a gazelle, there is an unspoken rule that prohibits aliens from interfering with our development until we have reached that final stage. And then of course there is zoo theory which is similar to incubation theory in that aliens have decided not to interfere with our existence, but different in that zoo theory does not follow the notion that all life in the universe began and evolved on earth. What's neat or perhaps terrifying about zoo theory is that it covers the idea that while we have not yet been able to observe extraterrestrial life forms ourselves, they have certainly been able to observe us, and they've been doing it for centuries. If this really is the case, I wonder if Earth is the entire zoo, or just one of many exhibits in a giant cosmic roadside attraction called the Milky Way. It's anyone's guess, really. Now, much like how in order to communicate with aliens via signal beam, we would have to send our communications to the exact right spot at the exact right time, the reason why we haven't seen aliens could just be a timing issue. It's entirely possible that aliens existed long before our current time. Maybe they were around for the beginning of humanity and maybe they even visited Earth early on in order to aid with some architectural projects like the pyramids and Stonehenge, but now they're gone. Extinct, donezo, we missed them and they're not coming back. I feel like this theory makes a fair bit of sense when you consider the references made in ancient text to godly humanoid figures that are now, for some reason, nowhere to be found. Perhaps extraterrestrial life forms knew they were dying out and stopped on Earth to keep their existence from becoming nothing but stardust. On the other hand, of course, perhaps we aren't late, but we're early. According to Abraham Leob of Harvard and Raphael Batista and David Salone of the University of Oxford, the chances of life on other planets is actually set to grow much higher in the distant future. I mean, life on Earth developed 30 million years after the Big Bang, and it's still in the early stages. So who's to say that in another 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 20 million years, the galaxy won't be teeming with various intelligent life forms? spread out across the cosmos. I mean, it makes sense, but so do the rest of these theories. Anyways, the likelihood of us being alone in this universe is slim, but the likelihood that we are lone intelligent beings in this universe because the rest of life is still in single celled stage one is much more probable. The dark forest hypothesis is another possible reason for our lack of alien communication. Basically the hypothesis states that the reason we have not yet crossed paths with any other life form is due to a drive towards self preservation and a fear of being destroyed by another hostile undetected civilization. I mean to be fair, if I were part of a peaceful albeit guarded civilization making my way through the cosmos and I stumbled upon humanity, I would 100% be absolutely terrified. We're scary, there's no denying it, 
don't even try. And what if there is another civilization out there even scarier than us? I don't want us to be looking in the wrong cosmic corner one day and accidentally run into our doom. Like you wouldn't go looking into the corners of a dark forest to figure out what's lurking there that could possibly kill you, so why are we doing it in our universe? Furthermore, it's likely that out of this sphere, extraterrestrial species are not only not looking for us, but also actively working against being found. But then again, on the other hand, maybe aliens don't exist and we really are alone, floating through the vastness of space, inching closer and closer to our impending doom that will one day come in the form of a massive quasar swallowing our galaxy whole. Who knows? I've been your host, Hannah Thompson. I'll see you next time.